Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And in today's video, I'll be reviewing one of my favorite ever stock pre-built mechanical keyboards that is just perfect straight out of the box, no mods necessary, and it's just wonderful. Hey guys, this is Betty from Switch and Click and Varmillo sent us the Koi version for us to check out their new ECV2 switches. But alongside that, a while back, a few months ago, I actually bought the V887M in the Moonlight Edition. And that's because we were looking at, well, what, sh what keyboard should we recommend to people? And everyone was saying, you know, the Varmilla board, they're perfect, they're wonderful. So we were like, okay, let's just shell out some money and buy it. So we did. And it was a really good experience. I wrote the website review on this board and now I'm glad that they reached out and they gave us a chance to review their newest boards. All right, so what's in the box? In the box, you get the keyboard itself, of course. In the Koi version, you get a red keycap puller. It's wired, it's really nice to use. But in the Moonlight Edition, you get the black one. So every one of these boards is going to come with a wire keycap puller. You also get a rubberized cable with the color matching your keyboard. And the downside of this is that it's mini USB. You are going to have to exchange whatever custom cable you're currently using to use a mini USB cable. Not my funnest thing, but you know, I had to do it and it you know, if your computer's all wire managed up, then it's sort of a pain in the butt. You also get a recyclable plastic dust cover. I don't really use these things, but they are tall enough to cover all of the gaps and make sure that dust doesn't enter your board. I really should start using these things though. Alongside that, in this version, you get a bunch of their postcards with their different koi designs. They're all different. One is red. Got a black one, a blue one, a purple one. So pretty, pretty nice, pretty nice. It's uh, not something that I'll use, but I'm glad they included it. And then you also get this little warranty information card as well as where to download the manual. And I did try it, but I couldn't find the manual online. It's okay because I did a lot of finicking with the board to figure out all of its features and stuff. It also comes with these two extra keys for caps lock and scroll lock with a little space for the light to pop through. So if you like seeing the lights visible, then you can just swap out the keys and that's really convenient as well. All right, as far as build quality goes, there's a reason that this is the Wirecutter's number one recommended keyboard. It is super sturdy. It's quite hefty. There's no flex at all. It has an aluminum plate and it does have a sort of floating keycap design, but the top plate is like over the aluminum plate. So there's a little less switch that's popping out than in those other keyboards that we've seen before. On the back, there are two kickup feet here with rubberized feet. There are five additional rubber feet alongside that. And if you look closely here, there's like textured designs all at the bottom here that you can feel with your fingers that pop up and it's really nice. I sort of wish whatever is here on the back was actually on the front side instead because we're missing a lot of the visual appeal on the back side. And then there's also this metal plate that's telling you the name and the brand and all that. You, you get your mini USB port right here in this little boxy area. And it's got some routing channels to go up left or right. So that was really good to see. One of the downsides of that though is while I was routing my cable to the left side, every time I picked up the board, the cable would sort of fall out of its channel. And then my board would be like sort of tilting a bit. So I would have to put it back in. So that was annoying. If you have your kickstands up or you don't plan on routing your wire to either side and you're just routing it straight up, you're not gonna see that problem. But that was annoying to see, definitely. The keycaps on here will definitely not disappoint. They are PBT, no shine, no grime. They're slightly textured, a little bit rougher than other boards. And alongside that, the legends are dye sublimated. So on the Koi version, when I first looked at the legends, I was like, oh, is that a misprint or something on 
like some of those modifier keys. But when I looked even closer, I could see that they were just little koi designs or little fish designs or water splashes or things like that rather than the letter itself. So that was a weird trick of the eyes, but I'm glad that it's not a misprint and that they actually planned for it to look like that. On the Koi version, the legends are strange at first because they're sort of stylized and they are definitely unique in their own way. But eventually you sort of just get used to it and take them for what they are. It is definitely unique. And the arrow keys have their directional water splashes. And I thought that was pretty cool to see. Above the arrow keys here, you have the design of one of these girls and a koi fish. And on escape, spacebar, and enter, you also have some artwork on it as well. But what I really would have liked to see is the back side get transferred to like the entire plate of the top side. And that would have been really awesome. So with the black on red keycaps, in dim light, the legends will be a little bit hard to see. And then you also have some of the side printed secondary functions as well on the function row for the media keys, on window for windows look and things like that. And there's also some things that they don't tell you on the board itself as well. And that took a while for me to figure out. So some of these features is that you can swap the FN key and the left windows key. So if you're wanting to use FN on the left hand instead of the right hand, you can do that by holding FN and Windows for about three to five seconds, and then they'll be swapped. The caps lock is going to flash three times when that happens, so you'll know when the keyboard did the switch. Alongside that, similar to the HHKB, you can also swap the functions of caps lock and the left control as well. And you do that by holding the FN key and the left control key for about three seconds or until caps lock blinks three times. And there is white backlight. It took me a while to figure out how to turn it on at first, but you press FN and either the up or down keys to switch between the two effects that there are with a white backlight, which is the static effect and the breathing effect. You just press FN and the right arrow key. And that's how you go in between that. FN and up and down will turn up and down the brightness of your backlight. So I like the whole white backlight thing. It looks super sleek. It's gonna match with any setup pretty much and just makes it easier to use at night. A convenient thing is that the secondary media function on the function row goes from F7 through F12. And that makes it easy to just do it with one hand rather than two hands to change your media keys. And of course, there is Windows Lock, FN and Windows, and you can access the menu by FN and the right control. So it's a quick overview of some of the other functions that it has. That's not really super straightforward and easy to figure out. All right, so onto the switches. So these are the new switches. The Sakura is very similar to Cherry MX Reds. It has a 45 gram operating force. It's a linear switch. They are electrocapacitive switches. So rather than having metal on metal touch each other for, for the switch to activate or actuate, the switch actuates via meeting its capacitance level and then it'll actuate via that way instead. I don't know too much about the details, but of course Vermilo has a bunch of details that you can read about it. The main point here is that they are really, 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 really super smooth. They're so smooth. And after breaking down some of the extra switches that they gave me, I do believe that they are slightly lubed. There's like no spring ping at all and they're smooth as butter. Smooth as a knife through butter. Smooth as a hot knife through butter. There's three different ECV2 switches available. I have the Sakura switch, but there's also the Rose switch and then the Daisy switch as well. They differ in their spring forces primarily because they're all linear switches. The Daisy is the lightest one at 35 grams. It's extra light and it feels very similar to a nicely lubed Gateron clear switch. The Sakura feels a little bit similar to Cherry MX Red, but due to the smoothness, it feels sort of lighter than MX Reds. And then the row switches are the heaviest at 55 grams operating force, and they're a little bit lighter than Cherry MX Blacks for sure. So they're super smooth and there's no spring ping. There's no wobble or anything like that. The stem of the switch is sort of boxy and it appears to protect itself from dust 
and similar things trying to enter the switch as well. So they're very satisfying to type on and it makes a deep, nice sound. There's no housing wobble or extra sounds that are present at all. Another thing I'd like to say is that to take apart the switch, you do need a kale style switch opener because it has those types of housings. And the stabilizers. The stabilizers are pre-looped and there is nothing to complain about or nitpick about or say anything about. They're just, they're perfect. They're cherry style plate mounted stabilizers. They are wonderful, especially that space bar on any of our Milo keyboards that we've used, like their stabilizers are a dream. All right, it's time for the typing test. So what's the verdict on these Varmillo boards? The ECV2 switches are a little bit more pricey than the Cherry Mix switches. You gotta pay a $10 premium for these ECV2 switches. Sort of similar to how when you have to pay for the Speed Silvers or the Silent switches that you pay a premium for those as well. So these are about the same price as those switch options. Varmillo is starting to push these 
ACV2 switches more and more, so you'll find them more readily available in all of their models and their different colorways. And you can pick these switches on their 65%, on their TKL, on their full size, their wide variety of different colorways and keycap designs as well. The prices of VA87Ms range from about $120 to $160. It's a little bit more pricey than the range that we're used to looking at and reviewing. But if you want to buy a board, just one board and not look at any other boards, not look at any more reviews and things like that, these are the boards to buy. They have really nice, super, really nice stabilizers. The switches are already lubed. The keycaps are phenomenal and the build quality is amazing. The only downside is that you're going to have to use a mini USB cable, but you can always find a custom one or tell someone to make a custom mini one. It is 100% worth it and it's gonna last and it feels amazing. If you want a board with similar features, but you want the 65%, then get the VA67M. They also sell these in the full size, the VA108M, I believe. So different sizes to work with for sure. And a ton of different colors. Most of them do have white backlight, but they also have a few here and there with RGB as well. It's just, you gotta look through all the models because there are so many. We've used a lot of boards over $100 these past few weeks. And from what I can see, like Varmillo boards are at the top. They're absolute winners. They are wonderful to type on. If I had to stick to any board for like the entire next year, I would probably pick a Varmillo Mia Pro or the VA67M and just stick with that. Probably with these ECV2 Sakura switches because they're so smooth being lubed and all that. You can check these out in the links down below. If you want, you can get these on mechanicalkeyboards.com and use switch and click to support us.